So here at UT, I talked to Chris, talk, no, Dr. Sullivan, and we discussed various research projects that I could do. And he suggested one in particular that really caught my attention. And that was trying to find the first virus that infects nematodes. Nematodes are very small worms that live in the soil that scientists have been using to study human conditions like salmonella, salmonella poisoning or Alzheimer's or alcoholism for decades. So they're a very powerful model organism. But when I started this project, no one had discovered a single virus that naturally infected the nematode. So for all the practical purposes we had studying bacterial infections or neurodegenerative diseases, we couldn't study viral infections like HIV or hepatitis. All those projects are amazing, and I'm working on some of the other ones right now, but this one had a very unique appeal to it. No graduate students working on it. It was for all practical purposes unfunded, and so by grabbing on this project, I was effectively getting a graduate student project. It was getting a very, in retrospect, very scary, but very enriching experience that taught me a lot about running my own research project, looking up my own articles, and asking my own questions. When I started, no one had discovered a virus that would infect this nematode. So as you can imagine, the HIV, the hepatitis, is, none of these can be studied in, in nematodes. So if we could find this virus, then we could expand our research efforts and hopefully improve therapies for these diseases. My plan was to devise an experiment that could actually find a virus because you can't, viruses are really small and hard to identify. So it's, kind of, it's difficult to find a new virus, but generally we find new viruses by finding someone who's sick. So we discovered HIV AIDS because people were turning up sick and um, immune compromised. In a similar fashion, we wanted to devise an experiment that could find sick nematodes. So what we did was we took this nematode and we knocked out its immune system. So we have a nematode that is missing its immune system. So now when that nematode gets a regular cold or flu like we do, it's not, it's not sick for a week and then it's good again. It's, when it gets infected, it's gonna stay infected. And so now when we're looking for this nematode, it's gonna be easier to find. Our window of opportunity of finding a sick nematode is much longer. So we put this nematode back into the dirt. Little tree, yeah, back, back in here. And that's where it'll probably get, that's where it's most likely to get sick. But therein lies the question, if we put the nematode back in, into the soil, how are we gonna be able to tell the difference between them and the little nematode friends? So what we did is we take this nematode and we make it glow bright green. So that way we can put this nematode in the soil let it hang out for a couple days and then grab it back out again. Then we can look at it and say, hey, this nematode's curling up in a corner, not moving anywhere. And then we can determine whether or not it might be infected by a virus. The other way we can do this is we can put a whole bunch of these bright glowing green nematodes in there with the immune compromised state. Take a whole bunch of them, put them in there, then count how many we get out. And if we get a lowered number, then something is killing them. If something's killing them, then we can look at the soil, the soil that these nematodes are in, and hunt for a possible virus that's going out and killing them. So that was the goal of, of the project that I designed with the funds that were given to me by the Undergraduate Research Fellowship. Well, a couple things. One, <clears> there <throat> are project for, for all practical purposes is unfunded. So I was borrowing supplies from other graduate students to make this project a reality. And when you're borrowing both resources, time, help, it's, it can get really tough. And so I wanted to make one of those a little bit easier. So I applied for this research fellowship, your undergraduate research fellowship, so that I could try to fund my own project and really, really find a system to study viruses and nematodes. The experiment was actually so straightforward that we could actually get high school students to help us out with this. So 
with this project we were able to expand it from just a research side to an outreach side. My professor, Dr. Sullivan, was able to get that project, so the outreach project, funded by the National, sorry, National Science Foundation. So he wrote a grant, and one third of that grant was geared solely towards this, this project, this wing of how this immune response to viruses work. And so this, this undergraduate research fellowship really helped us win that grant so we could fund this camp for five years, at least the chemicals and the actual reagents that we need to use to do it. So it was, it, it was in, in one sense seed money that we could use to actually make this into something much bigger.